welcome back to another special edition of WSCS. I'm Colin. And I'm Ella. Let's kick it off with the weather. Thanks, Colin. On Monday, it's going to be 70 degrees with rain in the morning. But in the afternoon, you can set up an obstacle course and challenge your siblings for who can do it the fastest. Treasure Hunt Tuesday, it's going to be 69 degrees with rain in the morning but sun in the afternoon. In the afternoon, you can set up a treasure hunt for your family or your family can set up a treasure hunt for you. Ooh, yum! Wednesday's Earth Day, it's going to be 67 degrees and mostly sunny all day. So this is a perfect day to plant something or just do some yard work to save the earth. And you may get a little bit dirty, but that's okay. Thursday is National Book Day. It's going to be raining and thundering all day with a high of 67 degrees. This will be a great day to grab your favorite book, cuddle up on a couch or bed, and start reading. On Fun Friday, we should have a Christmas party! Wait, a Christmas party? Christmas isn't for another eight months. It isn't? Well, this is awkward. She'll never understand. On Friday, it's going to be 69 degrees with a 60% chance of rain all day. This would be a great day to find old movies, whether that's home movies or just regular movies. On Saturday and Sunday, it's going to rain again. But did you know that April is actually Stress Awareness Month? This means that we need to be thankful for stress toys. Here's some more stress toys, and here's another way that you can make a stress toy. Here's a recap of the weather. Back to you, Colin. Thanks, Ella. Now let's move over to Caroline with the birthdays. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Colin. This week's birthdays are Charlie in fourth grade on April 20th, Henry in first grade on April 22nd, Luca in kindergarten on April 24th, and our staff birthday for this week is April 26th, and that's Nurse Rachel. Have a wonderful birthday, everyone. Back to you, Colin. Happy birthday! Hi. Now let's see what you has been reading. Thank you, Colin. Today, I'll be reminding you to make sure to check out Sequoia Elementary School's reading segment, Good Morning Sequoia, that will be posted online on Sequoia Elementary School's social media pages and YouTube channel on every morning of weekdays. Next, I'll be recommending an activity that will help little ones with reading. All you need to do is take some chalk and have some cement to draw on. You're going to draw squares with letters of the alphabet and... Then you're going to assign words for kindergartners, maybe first graders. Sometimes second graders might enjoy this game. So you just assign words and they jump from square to square to be able to spell the words. Like this way or this way? This game is a fun game to strengthen vocabulary and make reading easier for little kids. Now I have my sister demonstrating how to do this. So now that all the letters are written and everything is ready, I'm going to assign Callie a word and she's going to spell it by jumping from letter to letter. So, Callie, are you ready to start? Okay, your first word is Callie, your name. Good job! That's all I have for today. Back to you, Colin. Good books! Now let's bounce over to Claire for Casey's at Home. Thanks, Colin. Hey, guys, and welcome back to WSES. I'm your homeschooling news correspondent, Claire Tomlinson. On April 15th, Governor Bill Lee called for schools to remain closed for the rest of the academic year. In honor of this request, Knox County announced the closure of schools for the remainder of the year. Educational resources will be provided until May 11th, as well as meal distribution. Since school is out, end of year grades will be averaged with the grades from the first semester. Grades will become available to families by April 24th. School closure due to COVID-19 will not result in students being retained in their current grades. 
School being closed until the end of the year is tough on us all. We all miss our amazing teachers and friends. However, by staying home from school now and not playing with friends, you're slowing the spread of the virus. By doing this, we are all working together to make our community safe so that we can see each other again soon. I'm your homeschooling news correspondent, Claire Tomlinson. Until next time, stay safe. Back to you, Colin. Thanks, Claire. Ooh. Now let's go over to Alex for some community shout-outs. Thank you, Colin. I'm Alex Morrell, and I'm here to give a huge shout-out to our wonderful essential workers. Our essential workers include grocery store workers, Small business owners, restaurant workers, and shipping and mail service workers. Things you can do to help these businesses are making wood from the AR workshop or making a book bag, picking up food from your local restaurants, or maybe getting something from a local business. We should still be thankful for our healthcare providers and educators as we continue staying home. Back to you, Colin. Now let's move over to Art with Stephanie. Hey, Sequoia. I'm your encore expert, Stephanie Dunnicki. And today I have a challenge for you from this man. It's called the bookmaking challenge. Here's an example of a book that I made. And you can also make one. So all you need to do is make a book, then send it to Miss Green at amber.green at knoxschools.org, or you can send it to Miss Hinton on her weekly Sunday post to the parents. That's all for today. Miss Nunn will explain the rest. Back to you, Colin. Hi, everybody. Miss Nunn here. I hope you're staying healthy and well and having a great time in the sunshine. I'm here to challenge you today to make a book. Have you ever heard of an artist book? An artist book is a book of drawings, pictures, writings, I guess typically created by an artist, sometimes shown in museums. There are lots of different ways to create books. Sometimes you can just use things that are around your house. We could call those eco books. Eco books are created out of recycled goods, maybe cardboard or newspaper. And I have a couple of those here. I made this book. This is an accordion book made out of a recycled garbage, or not garbage bag, but a grocery bag. And for this book, I actually did a biography of somebody from history that I was studying. And the cover of this book is just made out of cardboard. Very simple. Another eco book could just be a recycled book. So this is a book that I actually took apart and then recovered with a new cover. I used some simple tape here and inserted my own pages for this book. And for this book, I did drawing and writing, and even you can do collections in your artist book. This week, I've actually been making a book out of an old calendar from my shed. So here's a January 2019 calendar. On the back, I've been drawing, this is a walnut, and then I also drew a wing nut. And every day I've just been challenging myself to add a page in my book. Maybe you have more advanced supplies at your house. Maybe you have an empty sketchbook that you can uh, use to create. This is a uh, just an empty sketchbook that I had. And in this book I created a flip book. If you don't know how to create a flip book, you can always look online at tutorials. Let's see if I can get this one to go. Let's try that one more time. Isn't that really 
that was an octopus that was grabbing a boat and sailing away. The last book that I want to show you is something called a carousel book. You can look up a tutorial for this online as well. But basically it's kind of like a pop-up book that has different layers. As you open the book, it's, it's kind of accordion folded. But this is more of a sculptural book that you could sit around, kind of like a pop-up book. It's a little bit more advanced. Oh, one more book is a book that maybe you would sew together. You would use a needle and thread to make this book. And for this book, I did uh, poetry. So just a typical writing book. All right, so happy creating. I think I'm going to go build something and enjoy the sunshine. See you later. Miss you guys. Now it's time to LOL with Wynn. And hello, Sequoia Thunderbirds. Here are your four jokes of the week. <clears throat> Number one, what do you get when you throw a pig into the bushes? Hedgehog. Number two, <clears throat> sorry, where do rabbits like to eat? I hop. Number three, why does a herd of deer have so much money? Because they have a lot of books. Number four, what kind of bears don't have teeth? Gummy bears. Thank you, and have a great day. Back to you, Colin. <laughs> Those, Those were awesome. awesome. Now it's time to bake with Mary Caroline. I, I like, like to mix, mix it, mix it. it. I, I like to mix it, mix it. Thanks, Colin. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Instead of baking something that you can eat, today we're going to be baking something that you can play. We're going to be making Play-Doh. What I love about this recipe is that it's easy and you can find most of the ingredients around you. The ingredients you will need are flour, salt, oil, measuring cups and measuring spoons, food coloring is optional, and the cream of tartar is also optional. This just makes it last a little bit longer. But as always, always have adult supervision. Let's get started. I like to add my wet ingredients first. With adult supervision, turn on the stove to medium heat and then add in your one cup of water and one tablespoon of oil. Now it's a good time to add in your food dye. Now combine your food dye with your wet ingredients if you add food dye in. Now it's time to add in your dry ingredients. One cup of flour, if you're adding cream of tartar, two teaspoons, half a cup of salt, and that's it. your mixture starts to pull away from the pot. Keep mixing. After your dough is formed, turn off your stove and get a piece of wax paper for your dough to cool. Your dough is hot, so you might want to let it cool on the wax paper before you. Once your dough is cooled, grab some cookie cutters and a rolling pin to play. You can store your Play-Doh in a plastic bag or container. Back that sounds awesome. Now let's learn how to do something with Davis. Colin. Hey everyone, today we're, I'm, I have a fun activity here for you guys with chalk. All you need is some chalk, tape, and some helpers if you want it to be fun. I have Adelie Adams and Caroline Kelvin. <laughs> if you want to make a border, we chose a square and you do it with now your tape. Now you add the lines and shapes, don't worry, it does not have to be perfect. Next, color in your shapes. This is how ours turned out Off to be. the tape. And this is how it should turn out. I hope this was a very fun project for everyone who did it. Back to you, Colin. That looks so cool. Now let's check in with Alan Lenore. Good morning, Sequoia students. My name is Eleanor Dildine, and I'm going to be performing a section in WSES called Hang In There. Okay, Hang In There describes um, experiments and things to do during this time. Today's experiment is a lemon volcano. Okay, so all you will need is a butter knife or a popsicle stick, something that you can just poke the lemons with, some food coloring, some baking soda, and a surface, uh, nope, just try to put uh, like tinfoil 
or wax paper on top of your surface because the food coloring can dye it if you don't put something on. Okay, uh, also you will need some paper towels. <laughs> Let's get started. So first we are going to just lightly poke the middle of the lemons. Um, you can carve it out, that does not really matter, but I like to carve just to make sure. Like this. So during what is going to happen in this experiment is since the lemon juice is an acid and the baking soda is a base, the when they join together it will cause a chemical reaction, which is what we call an explosion. So put your food coloring in. And get about this much of baking soda on your lemon. So it's going to need a little help to erupt. So just try to poke it like this. You know, get it really exploded. You can even carve it out like this. Thank you for watching. If you would like to see more experiments like this, things that you can do at home, then watch WSES every week. Back to you, Colin. Are you ready for some good news? Yeah. Let's hear from our student council president, Claire. <laughs> Thanks, Colin. And hi, everyone. Welcome back to SGN, some good news. Can you hear me some more notes? Okay, thank you. Mackenzie and Cooper are painting with their new dog, Ollie. We have Nay and Emmett, and they have set up an 18 hole frisbee golf course in their front yard. Wow, good job, guys. Addison is helping Oliver build up. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That was really close. Well, back to Addison and Oliver. Addison and Oliver are making a fairy garden and are having fun blowing bubbles on the trampoline. Davis and Thomas have a new 3D printer and they are making a shield mask for healthcare providers. Oh, looks like they're having fun at Starbucks. Thank you and see you next time. And remember to email your good news to Miss Green. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to SGN. So good. Thanks, Colin, and welcome back everyone to SGN. Some good news. <gasps> hi guys. Thank you, Colin, and hi guys. So welcome back. To Welcome back to see you. and see you next time. And remember to email your good news to Miss Green. And um uh uh hand me some more notes. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Oof. Now let's go to the Tristan with the pledge and motto. Hello, my name is Tristan Thompson. I will be doing the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Stay tuned for the Strong for Excellence. Hey, this is Strong for Excellence, so I'll be playing. Boys and girls, Colin, thank you for hosting again this week. And um, we want to thank our WSES news crew. They are doing a fantastic job, as well as big thanks to Mrs. Green for producing our newscast each week. Oh, there's Ruby. Ruby, do you want to say hi? Ruby's going to say hi to everybody. Okay, come here, Ruby. Ruby wants to be in on the fun, too. Oh. <laughs> Just for a second. Okay, Ruby, say hi. 
Ruby likes listening and hearing all the boys and girls stories too each week. Okay. Say bye, Ruby. Say bye. Here we go. All right. We'll go play in just a minute. Wait just a minute. Okay. Ruby had to make her debut. Um, we have some fun days um, and interesting days that are coming up this week um, to celebrate. On Wednesday, April 22nd, it is um, Earth Day. And so we're excited to um, recognize this important day and think about ways that we can um, positively impact our Earth and the community around us. I know this week in the Encore lessons, our STEM lesson for this week is connected to Earth Day as well. So you'll want to make sure to check out my Sunday email and that uh, link for the STEM lesson. There's a book this week that connects to um, doing good things for our Earth. So that takes Earth Day is on Wednesday, April 22nd. Also coming up this week, a national day that we can celebrate is National Picnic Day, and that is on Thursday, um, April 23rd. If the weather is not great for a picnic outside, you can always have a picnic inside your house. And so um, I hope everyone can celebrate and enjoy a picnic together with your family or friends um, that you're with um, on Thursday. Um, just a few announcements um, boys and girls, I know your parents have shared with you that we um, we are not going to have school any any uh, longer for this school year, and so school is canceled through the end of the school year. But there are so many ways to stay connected to your teachers, to um, Sequoia Elementary School staff, and even to your classmates. So don't forget, each day we post Good Morning Sequoia book readings, and that's from teachers that are um, sharing a favorite book that they have. So make sure that you watch those either on social media or on the email I send out each morning. We also have this broadcast um, that the fifth graders are doing a great job with that's sent out on every Monday and highlighting big events for the week and fun things that you can do at home. Um, the teachers are also doing Zoom lessons and Canvas um, lessons and Seesaw, and so there's great ways for you to connect. We want to make sure that you're taking advantage of every opportunity. Our Encore teachers are creating amazing lessons for you to uh, practice at home. Um, I saw videos last week of even younger brother and sisters that are not even in school yet doing some great things together as a family through our Encore lessons, and so we want to encourage you to um, make sure that you pull that resource, have your parents look at their email and get those uh, videos each um, Sunday where those are connected into my Sunday email. Um, we do and we are planning for some uh, creative ways to celebrate our fifth graders and so we will not let the school year end without recognizing each and every one of them and giving the opportunity to really send them off to middle school in a, an exciting way. This will be a unique year that we'll just never forget. It will be um, a great opportunity as a school family uh, together. Um, also, I want to end today and my section with reading some haiku poems that I received this week. Um, remember, Saturday yesterday, or excuse me, Saturday the um, 18th was um, National Haiku Poetry Day. And so um, here are a few haiku poems that I received from students and staff. Gage, in third grade, wrote the poem, Trains. Awesome and diverse, some carry freight or people, steam, diesel, maglev. Great job, Gage. We love your poem on trains. Excellent. And we learned something about the different types of trains. Our next haiku came from Miss Celia, our secretary. Her haiku is called, Blooms. Spring blooms do not care that a virus changed the world. Their beauty still joy. Thank you, Miss Celia. We love that. It's a beautiful poem and gives us hope for um, the days ahead. Bowen, who is in first grade, wrote about one of my favorite things to do when I was at home and I was your age, Legos. His haiku says, Legos are so fun. You can create something cool. Can you make a truck? Great job, Bowen. I like that haiku. And then the last two are from a brother and sister, Benson, who, uh, Benson and Selma Kate, who have both created haiku poems. The first is from Selma Kate, and it's entitled Easter. 
and it says, my brother got cards, I got a new camera, Margaret got a doll. I love that. And then the last poem is from her brother Benson, who is in kindergarten, and his poem is entitled, My Mom. My mom is the best. My mom helps me clean and read. My mom is pretty. I love that, Benson. Great job. Those poems had five syllables in the first line, seven syllables, and then five syllables in the last line. Great jobs, guys. So creative. You can still create haikus and have your parents send those to me. I love reading your writing and your creativity. I love sharing that with other people. All right, that's all the announcements for today from our principal moment. Have a fantastic week ahead. We love you. We miss you. Find ways that you can soar this week.